And let's now shift focus to China. This afternoon, it received a special guest, the Prime Minister of Russia, Mikhail Mishustin, the highest ranking official to visit Beijing since Moscow sent troops to Ukraine last year. He arrived in Beijing on Wednesday afternoon for a two-day visit aimed at strengthening ties. And the timing of the visit is quite interesting. It comes less than a week after the G7, a summit which, for all practical purposes, revolved around the actions of Russia and China. You see, most G7 declarations singles Russia and China out as the biggest troublemakers, be it the war in Ukraine, nuclear proliferation, economic coercion, military maneuvering, Russia and China were accused of all these charges. In fact, the bloc discussed imposing new sanctions against Russia and formulating strategic approaches in dealing with China. The draft joint communique mentioned efforts to reduce reliance on China in the global supply chain and preventing Russian commodities from reaching other countries. Immediately after the summit, Russia and China hit back at the bloc, accusing it of smearing their image. The Russian foreign minister, in fact, said the G7 was indulging in its own greatness with an agenda that aimed to deter Russia and China. Meanwhile, China's foreign ministry accused the G7 leaders of hindering international peace and said the group needed to reflect on its behavior and change course, quote unquote. This was last week. This week, the Russian Prime Minister has reached Beijing. And if we go by the optics, this visit seems to be aimed at countering the display of unity that the G7 put up last week. If there were any doubts about this, some remarks made by the Russian Prime Minister settled them all. He met with the Chinese Premier and spoke in detail about bilateral unity. Let me just quote his exact statement. Today, relations, with, re, relations between Russia and China are at an unprecedented high level. They are characterized by mutual respect of each other's interests, the desire to jointly respond to challenges which is associated with increased turbulence in the international arena and the pressure of illegitimate sanctions from the collective West. As our Chinese friends say, unity makes it possible to move mountains. And this was followed by a statement from the Chinese Premier. He talked about how Russia and China's business cooperation is at an all-time high, how bilaterally trade is on a year-on-year -year increase of over 40%, and how the scale of investments between the two countries is also increasing. Listen to this. So far this year, pragmatic cooperation between China and Russia has shown a good development trend. From January to April, you can see that our bilateral trade has quickly broken through more than 70 billion US dollars. This is a year-on-year -year increase of more than 40 percent. The scale of investment between the two countries is also continuously upgrading. Strategic large-scale projects are steadily advancing. Local and cultural exchanges have also been heating up. And these statements were followed by agreements. The two leaders inked several economic pacts. This included an agreement to deepen investment cooperation in trade services, a pact on export of agricultural products to China, and a memorandum of understanding on sports cooperation as well. All these agreements are aimed at strengthening bilateral trade. In fact, the Global Times says that trade between the two countries could hit the $200 billion goal by the end of this year. And at the same time, the state media outlet has said that this cooperation should not be associated with the ongoing Ukraine crisis. Let me just quote the most telling excerpt. China and Russia moving closer on economic cooperation should not be associated with the ongoing Ukraine crisis, nor should be seen as China skewing towards certain party. China has the right to choose who to work with, as long as the collaboration does not violate international norms, and such a choice will not be disturbed by noise from any third party. You see, the message is loud and clear. No matter Western sanctions, no matter Western pressure campaigns, Moscow and Beijing will not relent. If anything, forums like the G7 will only bring the two countries closer. 
We are now available in your country. Download the app now. Get all the updates on the move.